Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today it's about uh, the Channel 60 modulator in Bitwig Studio 4.2 beta version 3. And I try to explain a bit what it's all about, how you can use it, some inspirational tips. I later on also discover some uh, bugs, some minor bugs, of course, it's still beta. And maybe also some um, ideas for the future, some <coughs> feature requests. <coughs> And I would say, um, enough talk. Let's start. So this is how the channel 16 yeah, looks like in Bitwig Studio when you attach it to a device. And you can also attach it to a VST, of course, if you want to. Uh, I'm not sure how it works with multiple voices or polyphony, but um, with the Bitwig devices, it works fairly great. And with this channel 16 modulator, you can define data or modulation on a per note basis. So we have your note clip, we have multiple notes in there, and each note has a different MIDI channel here. You can select it on the right side when you select a note, you can go to the inspector, select a different MIDI channel. So the first note here is channel one, the second note is channel two, and the third note is of course channel three. And because all the devices, all the instruments, software instruments here don't use MIDI channels at all, um, we can basically misuse these MIDI channels for modulating something with a channel 16 modulator. So we play multiple notes at the same time. All these notes go into the polymer here, which is a synth synthesizer. And we play each voice um, back and we use the channel 16 modulator to add different modulations to each voice. So we have all three voices here with all three channels and apply here multiple or different modulations. So the first note is no modulation at all. It's in default state. The second note here gets a bit of a uh, wavetable position and the third one also. And maybe we can here close the filter a bit more. So what this means now is that each note sounds different. And maybe play all three notes together. It sounds like this. And when we mute here multiple notes, this note sounds like this. It's a different wavetable position. And the third one here has basically also a different wavetable position. And a different filter position applied. So it's basically, you can define modulation on a per note base. And we could do this before with the expressions here. Um, a, something along those lines, because we could select here a note and say, we want to apply maybe different velocity, different pressure, or pen setting, or gain setting. And now we have um, MIDI channels where we can make use of the MIDI channels or misuse the MIDI channels to modulate something on a per note base. And I always wanted to have something like this and a bit more in depth where we can maybe go in here, select a note and say, uh, add a parameter to this note. And this parameter then modulates something here in the synth synthesizer in Bitwig in the device itself. So it could be nice if we have actually in the future here some kind of table where we can add variables to the node itself, multiple variables, and can maybe rename these variables. And then we just grab these variables inside here with the modulator and modulate something to it. Because now we are kind of limited to 16 different settings, which, which is pretty fine. It's, it's enough for mo in most cases. Um, but it would be nice to actually extend this a bit more for um, maybe different uses. So for instance, I used in the um, recent day here, the channel 16 modulator for chords. So we have maybe a multi-node and you have a, a minor chord here and you play one note. So this is a minor chord here. Something like this, and you add a channel 16 modulator here. And you say, when we play something with uh, a note with a channel 2, then actually switch this here to a major chord. Something like this, right? So 
we can now define here on the node itself what kind of chord we play. So when it's channel one, we play a minor chord. When it's channel two, we play a major chord. And then you can create basically um, chord progressions here. And you can define here yeah, with the channel itself what kind of chord you play. And maybe we use here also my wrapper preset, which I showed you in some of my uh, recent videos. And you can play around here with changing the chord, maybe different settings. We go to And you can extend this here, of course, with more voices. Maybe you go to, um, maybe go to a minor seventh and a major seventh. So something like this, right? Um, you can also imagine to use here, um, instead of a multi-node, you can use a key filter for, for instance, right? And can add a channel 16 to that and use then on a per node base um, channel 16 modulator to change here maybe the, the scale or the mode. You can also use this for bass lines. For instance, we use here a phase four um, synth. Use some notes and go down here to E probably. And we maybe use here MIDI channel two for the second note. And now we can use a classic LFO here. And switch this maybe here to synced or notes, that's okay. Um, dial in some modulations here. And we add here also a channel 16 modulator. And uh, I don't need everything, I just need these. Yeah. Why is it open? Voice bar either. So now we can define here yeah, channel two, maybe changes here the speed setting and also here the mode. So let's listen to that. Okay, nice. And we use here channel three. And channel three modulates the LFO here even more. So two and maybe two here. Nice. And we can also switch this here to mono mode, monophonic. Right, every note gets its own different LFO setting. And this is, in my opinion, pretty powerful because you can stay in the piano roll and just change the channel for each note. And you know, in the background, it changes modulations, maybe chords, maybe um, pitches or wave table positions or anything like that. We could maybe also here go for, this is channel two. Maybe channel two also opens this here a bit more and maybe changes here the ratio of the second operator. So let's try how this sounds.
does currently a bug here when you change some of the settings modulations then it applies it also to the first node i'm not sure why that is uh, but you have to change the settings here the voice settings and to reset it <laughs> But in my opinion, this is pretty powerful. Like I said, um, changing something on a per node base. And I really wish we get in the future more like this, where we have maybe a table on the left side, piano roll, you select a node, you have a table here, an array of data, and you can add a data point or a parameter, add the value, and then you go into your modulator, you can recall this uh, parameter and apply the value to some random um knobs in the device itself so we could probably do something like go in the piano roll select the node and then decide here if i want to add maybe distortion if i want to change the chord which kind of scale i have maybe add the reverb or not the reverb or maybe change the wavetable position so you can could do a lot of things with these uh, kind of um parameters um, and you could stay in the piano roll and con concentrate on what kind of notes you want to play and then you select in the inspector here what kind of parameter you want to change on the synth or on the audio effects could be pretty powerful in my opinion no one does this currently in uh, in audio workstations uh, but the channel filter the channel 16 filter uh, modulator goes in that direction so in this example here I have a drum machine, I have some samples in there, some drum samples. Pretty simple. There's a drum loop here. And we can use your different channels on the snare drum. So I switch this all to one so we can hear how it sounds. Right? Um, but I defined some effects on the snare drum here. So we can say I want to have a reverb on this snare. Or maybe on this one here. Like three. Okay, and then this one I want just a delay. So this is something you could do probably with the channel 16 modulator. I have this here attached to the drum machine. And then I modulate here with channel 2. I modulate inside this chain of the snare. Um, basically here the volume tool which goes into the delay 1 to feed basically this delay with the input. And um, this is also kind of a drawback with the uh, with the modulation system currently in Bitwig Studio. Um, this channel 16 modulator handle is only active as long as the node is. So when you modulate, for instance, um, a mix of an effect, then the mix is... There is no envelope you can define, basically. So when you have a reverb here, and say every time a MIDI note with channel 2 plays, I want to fade in here the mix of, a, of the reverb. Then this mix knob only lasts as long as the note is in this position and then switches instantaneously back to zero. There's no fall off or envelope you can define. We still have an envelope in here. But this envelope is only triggered by MIDI notes, so there's no way you can trigger this with an channel 16, right? And then use this envelope curve then to modulate this one here. So this is a bit of a, a bummer, basically. So for certain situations, channel 16 doesn't work, in my opinion. You have to find workarounds. Um, inside Bitwig, but this was always a problem here um, that you couldn't actually trigger an envelope inside the modulation system. So when I've defined here channel 2 and blend this in, lay this back, you can see as long as the node plays here, 
to make a longer note. Maybe it's also a nice effect, but you have to um, yeah think about this. So there's no envelope. Also, the leg here is not a fall off. It's more like a ramp. That would be nice maybe to have here instead of leg also um, rise and fall or something like this. I'm not sure if the global mount here is needed. So I could imagine replacing this here maybe with the fall off and this or with the fall and this with the rise or something like this. Could be a walk around or maybe give us a small um, ADSR here down below. Um, that could be maybe more interesting or change the modulation system so we can modulate here maybe an ADSR. Um, so trigger basically an ADSR here with the modulation system and then we can use this then to trigger the mix. For instance, so there are multiple workarounds. I could imagine how this works out. Um, so yeah, so this is um, something you can do with the channel 16. Um, at first, when I heard about channel 16 um, modulator, I thought that we also get amounts here for maybe the velocity. So when you have something here on channel 2 and you modulate something here on channel 2, um, the glide for instance, and then how much or the amount of modulation you apply to the glide is decided by um, the velocity. Um, right, which kind of kind of thing you dial in here, but it's not the case. It's either on or off, so there's no um, modulation amount um, transferred from from the node to the modulator handles here. That's it for the day. If you liked the video, then please leave a like. If you dislike the video, then please leave a dislike. If you have some questions, then please leave a comment in the comments below so I can answer your questions in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. This was fast.